In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you about the object browser, but it'll probably end up being like a two part video because the object browser is a little bit complex. Um, it also is going to seem a little boring at first, but it is probably my favorite thing in Inspire because it makes everybody's life easier somewhere down the line. And uh, so hang in there. The object browser assists you in customizing flip chart pages with multiple layers. That should make no sense to you. So hopefully this page that I show you will help you to understand the idea. There's four layers in a flip chart page, top, middle, bottom layer, and the background layer. And in general, the top layer is made up just of things that we call annotations. Annotations are any marks you may make on your page with either the pen tool, which is right over here, or the highlighter tool, which is this tool on your page. So for instance, if I just click on the highlighter and I scribble, that ends up automatically being on my top layer. Your middle layer is made up of a variety of images and objects. You have a bottom layer if you need it, and the background is really like your background color or anything you absolutely don't want to move whatsoever. So big deal. Um, why is this important? Well, I can't really explain why it's important just yet, but I can go to the object browser, which is this particular icon in your seven browsers or in the browser window. So I click on that. And if you hover, meaning that you hover over the border of the left edge of the browser window, you can see your cursor changes. And when it changes, if you click and drag, you can make this bigger, which I kind of want to do to show you this this uh, the importance of this. The other thing is if you go to the header row and you hover over the border between two parts of the header, you can click and you can see more of this as well and that helps. So now you can fully see my object browser. This is just simply a list of everything that's on the page and what order it is in terms of layers. So for instance, if you go look at the top layer over here in the browser, I click on it, you can see that's that pink parallelogram. And on top of that are the pen marks and the highlighter marks. Now watch what happens if I just decide to drag that highlighter mark that I actually I'm going to move it over so you can see right now that highlighter mark is on top of parallelogram. And now if I drag it and put it under the parallelogram just with a drag and drop, it goes behind and you can see those little crosshairs that are on top of the highlighter now. I'll show you another example later. So this is a great way for you, number one, to see all the objects on your page, number two, to quickly change their order. So now in the middle layer is this arrow as an example and, the, and that purple diamond. So for example, I could take that diamond right there and it's in front of the blue, I mean, excuse me, the green parallelogram, which I click over here to select. But I'm going to take that diamond. What if I move it to the very bottom behind everything in the background? What's going to happen to the diamond? If I pull it down here, I got to let go when you see a line in your browser there. I let go and it's disappeared. Doesn't mean it's gone. It's just probably sitting behind this shape that has like bricks in it. If I bring it back up a couple spots, it is visible and you can see it now um, behind other things. So um, the background layer is important because that's everything that you don't want to move, just you don't want that glued onto your page. So right now, if I click on the image, let's see, what can I select down in my background here? You can't even see it because if I, I can't even move what's in my background, which is the bricks, unless I move it up a layer. So, And also this white box that's behind everything, I can't move that because that's in my background layer as well. You can see I can try to drag it, can't do. But what happens if I bring that white box, which is my last thing in my list here, and I bring it up to the very top, it will cover up everything on the page. That stuff's not gone just hiding behind the white box. So you can see that the object browser is really important to get a quick snapshot of all your objects that are on the page, ones that might be hiding, and to easily change their layers. That comes into um, effect or importance later on as you learn more about Inspire. But that's a good overall view of the object browser.